Hello and welcome to the All Flyers. I recently posted a talk about Major General Levi R. Chase, a World War II American fighter pilot credited with downing German, Italian and Japanese aircraft. Major Phil Cochran dubbed Chase a one-man wave of terror for his success in spotting and then destroying ground targets. I hadn't come across Phil Cochran before, so I did some research. I'm glad I did. I found the interview in 1975 conducted by the United States Air Force Historical Research Center. Philip Cochran joined the Army Air Corps as an aviation cadet in 1936. He had read articles written by Richard Weller in the Saturday Evening Post about a flying school in Texas. He figured it would be tough to get through the Army Flying School in San Antonio, Texas, namely Randolph Field and that if you could get through, you really had something. He applied to join the Air Force. This was the Depression, and money and jobs just weren't available. The selection process was severe. Because he was short, he thought he would fail the physical. Yet he passed, and training began. Upon qualification, he boarded the British aircraft carrier Archer with others and 35 P-40s to support the hard-pressed forces battling the Germans in North Africa during World War II. His many daring exploits in North Africa earned him fame and the attention of General Hap Arnold, who personally selected Cochrane to plan and lead the aerial invasion of Burma as commander of the 1st Air Commando Task Force. Cochrane wasn't impressed with this, telling Hap Arnold that this was a side alley fight over in some jungle in Burma and the real fight was in Europe. Cochrane relented and recommended Johnny Ellison to join them. Both were tasked with supporting the long-range penetration efforts of General Ord Wingate. Wingate was an eccentric British soldier, the general who had distinguished himself leading raids into Burma the year before, a form of invasion called long-range penetration. He led long-range forays into enemy territory using mules for transport through the jungle. They would get in and disrupt the enemy, blowing up bridges and take territory. Ord Wingate controversially gained approval for a greatly expanded Chindit force, which was given the task of assisting General Stilwell by disrupting the Japanese lines of supply to the northern front. Wingate felt that if he had some air support, it would make him more effective. Evacuating the wounded back through the jungle was too slow. Airlifting was the answer. Cochrane talked it over with Johnny Ellison and began to form some ideas of how best an air capability could be used in this long range penetration type of jungle warfare. They began to expand on Wingate's plans. Aircraft would be key to moving ground troops, artillery, giving air ground support fighter support and bombardment. They had to figure out what aircraft was needed, what they wanted them for, how many pilots they would need, how many mechanics, and so on. There weren't any off-the-shelf solutions in the Air Force. They were named Project 9. They would be superimposed as a task force on an already beleaguered region being China, Burma, and India, where supplies were few. Supplies were being directed to North Africa and Europe. Little L-5 aircraft to haul out wounded were ideal. Now they wanted gliders, transports, DC-3s, P-51s or better fighters and B-25s. Cochrane presented his plan to General Arnold. Arnold wouldn't read long proposals so they shortened it. I read that ex-President Trump is not a reader either. General Arnold and Vandenberg approved the plan. Because Johnny Ellison knew influential Harry Hopkins, they were able to get four helicopters, the first to be used in combat. Why was it vital to retake Burma from the Japanese? The Japanese knew that supplies into China were coming from India. Resource-rich India was attractive to the Japanese and they thought they could rid India of the British just as they had recently done at Singapore. 
Roosevelt was determined to support China. Unable to cross Burma, the route into China from India had to be over the hump, the Himalayas. Taking back northern Burma would make flight over the hump unnecessary. The first air commando task force got 17,000 men into Burma. Their ammunition, their guns, provisions and mules for transport. Then they kept them there. Their use of DC-3s and gliders into jungle airstrips saved soldiers many days of hard slogging. Experience with towed gliders was applied for later D-Day glider landings. Up to 60,000 Japanese died of fighting, starvation and disease before surrender to the British at Rangoon on the 24th of October 1945. 26 months later, Burma gained independence from Britain. Colonel Cochrane returned to the United States and assisted with the formation of the next two air commando units headed to India. Because of his medical situation, he resigned his commission in 1946. Thank you for watching. Liking and subscribing encourages new content.